Hello everyone, welcome to day five, uh, another discussion on descriptive statistics. Today we're going to be talking about measures of location and box plots, which is a representation of the location of the data. Um, this is also, is also referred to as uh, measures of relative standing, or just measures of standing. We have already covered chapter one, and the first part of chapter two, and now we will be doing the second sec the second part of chapter two, of which there are three parts. Okay, so the goals for this lesson are to understand and be able to find the percentiles of a data set, understand and be able to find the percent rank of a data value. So if you give me a data set, I can tell you what the percentiles are. If you give me a data value and a data set, I can tell you, tell you where that data ranks as far as percentile. Um, then we want to understand to be able to find quartiles, understand to be able to find the five number summary, and to know how to read and create box plots and be able to identify outliers. So that's what we're looking at today. This is all in the context of univariate quantitative data. So this is just one list of numbers. Okay, so first let's talk about the percentiles of a data set. I give you a data set, I say, what's the percentile? What's the 50th percentile? Something like that. Okay, so the percentile of a data set is a number where a certain percentage of values from the data set fall below that number. It divides ordered data into groups of 1%. So 1 one hundredth of the data is in each percentile. The kth percentile of a data set is a value. So we were going to refer to that as a value. Possibly outside of the data set, such that k percent of the data is equal to or less than it. Okay, so here's an example on the graduation record examination, the GRE. If you score in the 78th percentile, you scored the same or better than 78% of test takers. How is the percentile of a data set computed? The first thing to do in finding the kth percentile of a data set is to f find all of these values. So first, n, the total number of values in the data set, total number of scores, for instance. K is the percentile you are interested in, for like 25th percentile, that would be K equals 25. I is what we're going to compute, that's the locator that gives the position of a value from the sorted data. Okay, so that gives us the position of a particular value. And then PK is the Kth percentile. So P25 is the 25th percentile. And that is an element of the data range. So if your original data was uh, heights, then P25 is going to be some height for which 25% of the heights in your data set are the same or less than it. And so this is a sort of data value. Okay. And I is the location of that data value. So what you do is you plug in this, the K and the N into this formula, and you get out an I. Now what you do with that is that if I is an integer, then just simply take the ith data point from your sorted data set. If I is not an integer, then what you do is you round I down to some integer, and then you round I up, and you take that other data point, and then you average them. Okay, we will go over an example of that later. The percentile rank of a data value is the percent of the data less than or equal to the given data value. So this means you're given a set and you're given a data value and you want to find the, where that data value ranks. It gives the relative standing of a given data value with regard to the set, given set. Uh, this is sometimes just referred to as the percentile the data value is in. I'm sure you'll see that terminology. The percentile it is in, as though the percentile was a class, a group of uh, values. Okay, so hypothetically, if I got 156 for verbal on the GRE, 
I don't know what percentile rank that would be because I don't have the data set, the whole data set. They keep that secret. But the company that has access to that data could tell me. Okay, and so according to the website, a 156 is in the 70th percentile. So that means that 70% uh, of scores are less than or equal to 156. Okay, for interestingly enough, for the quantitative uh, portion of the exam, a, a perfect score is 170. That score is in the 94th percentile. And so what does that, what does that tell us? What, around 6% of people get a perfect score on the, uh, on the quantitative uh, portion of that exam, right? Around 6%. So, so that's interesting. Okay, percentile rank of a data value. So to find the percentile rank of a given data value, you need n, the number of, the, the number of values in the data set, x is the number of data values in the set that is strictly less than the data value, and y is the number of data values in the set that is equal to that. k is the percentile rank that you want to find. Um, so what you do is uh, you, you put in x, you put in y, you put in n, you plug it into this formula, and then you simply just round to the nearest integer. And we'll show an example of uh, looking at percentile rank, but we'll just say in, we'll be looking for in what percentile a particular data score is. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So what we have here is a random sampling of the average points per game of players age 30 to 33 inclusive in the NBA. So there's a number of 30 to 33 year olds playing in the NBA. Each one of them has played a number of games and scored some points. Those points for each game was averaged. And this is what we have here. This data has been ordered for our convenience. The question is, find the 90th percentile of the average points per game. So that's of the data set. So this is the this is the first one. We're finding the percentile of the data set. So we're looking for P90 of this data set. Okay, this is what we're gonna to want to use. How do I know I'm gonna use this one? Because they did not give me a particular data value. They said, here's the whole set. Find the 90th percentile of the whole set. They did not give me a single value. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm looking for I, don't know what it is, but it is gonna equal K, which is 90, that 90th percentile, that's K, divide it by 100, and then multiply by the number of data in this set. Let's see, uh, so that's 10. So this one here is the 11th, this is the 21st, and then we have the 61st, 62nd, there's 68 of these. 68 plus 1 is 69, and so I have 9 over 10, cancel my zeros, times 69 is 62.1. Okay, and the question is, is that an integer? Answer, no. So I'm going to average the 62nd and the 63rd data values. And so this right here is the 62nd data value. This one here is the 63rd. So that is going to be, so P90 is going to equal 18 plus 19.2 over 2, which equals 18.6. So there it is. Koa Baker, who used to play uh, basketball here at SVU, and since being at SVU, I don't, averages 19.6 points per game. Now this is not in the NBA, but still 19.6 points per game. If this were an NBA figure, if it were, what percentile would that be in? All right, so am I looking for the percentile of a data set or percentile of a value? Well, they have given me a value and that value is 19.6 and they asked me to find the percentile of that value. So for that one, I'm going to use this formula, the formula for a percentile of a value. And so what I need to find is x, and x is the number of data values that is 
less than 19.6, which is going to be, so 19.6 would be right here. And so how many are less than that? Well, we pretty much already know that that's going to be 63 from what we did before. But I would count them and just see how many are less. So this is going to be 63. Now we need to find y. y is the, the number of the data value that is equal to 19.6, and that is actually 0. There's none of them that are equal to 19.6. So how do I find k? k is now going to equal 63 plus 0 0.5 times 0 over n, and n we decided was 68 times 100. I punch that into my calculator, and I get 92.6. So I am going to round that to the nearest integer. And so k equals 93. So that is the 93rd percentile. Okay, let's take another example. Sometimes we don't have all of the data. We may just have a binned frequency table, such as this. The table shows the average daily screen usage time for 120 randomly selected study participants. Question is, find the median and 80th percentile of the data set. Now the median is just P50. Okay, so since it wants it of the data set, I'm going to try, I am going to find I. So that's what they want. I am going to start with I equals, and then I, I look back to my formula here, K, which is 50 over 100 times N plus 1. And so that's going to equal... 50 over 100 is 1 half. N is 120. So this is going to be 121. And that's going to equal 60.5. This is not an integer. So I need to average the 60 and 61st. I round it down and I round it up. The 60 and the 61st data, first data values. So how do I find the 60 and 61st value of this data set. Well, we have to understand what this table represents. Of course, we don't have the actual data. We just have this frequency table. However, we can use what we know from the table to estimate what the data is, get a pretty good likeness of the data. And so we've got these classes, right? And each one of these classes we're going to assign a representative uh, that best approximates the values in that class. So the first class is easy. If it's none, then the number of hours is always just going to be zero. So that's zero for the first class. The second class, there are seven times that are in between zero and one. And so the best thing you can do to represent that is use the midpoint. We're going to use the midpoint of the class to be the class representative. And so the midpoint of this class is going to be 0.5. It's between 0, halfway between 0 and 1. The midpoint for the second class is going to be 1.5. That's halfway between 0, 1, and 2. And so on. So those are the values that we are going to use to represent every member in that class. Okay, so let's, so the first five are zeros. The next seven are point fives, and so that brings us to 12 values total. And then the next 14 are 1.5s, and if we include those into our cumulative count, that becomes 26 values. So the 27th value is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3 hours, and we're just going to use 2.5 to represent it. So that would be the 27th value. Um, counting all the 2.5s, that brings us to 39. And then the data values that are between 3 and 4, adding those, that gives us brings us to 59. And so the 60th value 
is the first 4.5. So 60th value is 4.5, and 61st is also. And so P50 is going to equal the average between 4.5 and 4.5, which is, of course, just 4.5. So 4.5 hours is the median. Now, the actual median was 4 hours and 10 minutes. So, I don't know, got us in the ballpark. We're off by 20 minutes. Okay, let's find um, P80 now. I equals 80 over 100 times 121, and that is going to equal 96.8. Again, again, not an integer, so average... 96th and 97th data value. So let's carry on with our cumulative counting the numbers here. Okay, so uh, the 96th and the 97th value are going to lie in this class right here. They're the first and second L members of this class. And so they're going to be 7.5. So again, if I average 7.5 and 7.5, I'm going to get 7.5. That's 7.5 hours. All right, and then question, in what percentage would you fall? So it might be an interesting thing. Open up your phone and uh, see if it tells you how much screen time you average per day. Let's just say it was 2 hours and 12 minutes. Would that be? That'd be 2 hours and 1 one fifth, so that would be 2.2 hours. And so now we want the percentile of this data point. And so what we need to do is we're looking for K, and in order to get K, we need X, which is the number that is less than 2.2. That takes us to this value. There are 26 values less than 2.2. Two, and how many are equal? Zero. None are equal. None of our representatives are equal to 2.2. So that gives us k equals 26 plus 0.5 times 0 over n plus 1 times 100. Divided by 121, which is n plus 1. So I get 21.49. But I need to round it. So that's going to be... 21. So somebody who got 2.2 hours of sleep are about in the 21st percentile. Okay, now we can do the same thing using a histogram. So let's do that. The histogram shows the average daily screen usage time for 100 randomly selected study participants. Now what we want to do is find the median and 80th percentile of this data set. So again, I'm just going to look at, uh, so I want P50. In order to get there, I need to find I. And I is going to equal uh, K, which is 50 over 100 times N plus 1, which is 101. And this gives me gets me pretty close to, so that gives me 50.5. And so I need to average the, not an in integer, so I am looking for the 50th and 51st. So we this is a histogram, and we've got, and the bins are in hours. So our representatives are going to be, 0.5, 1.5, and so on. So let's take our cumulative, uh, our cumulative frequency count. So we've got eight and six, and so this is going to be. This is a total of fourteen. Add another fourteen, that's twenty-eight. Add eleven to that, and that's. 39, add 12 to that, and that gets me to 51. Okay, so my 50th and my 51st data value is in the 4 to 5 class. 
So I average those and I get 4.5. All right, let's do P80. Okay, so that's going, that one's going to be 80.5. And what percentage would, would I fall? So if I had 2.2, so if I had 2.2 right here, there would be, there would be x equals 14 below, y equals 0, equal to, and so that would be 14 over 101 times 100. And so that would give me k equals 14.14, round it down. That is the 14th percentile. Okay, so that allows us to find uh, percentiles when all we have is a histogram or a uh, frequency table. Quartiles of a data set. Quartiles are measures of location denoted Q1, Q2, and Q3 which divide a set of data into four groups with about, not exactly, 25% of the values in each group. The first quartile, Q1, is the same value as P25, and that's how we'll compute it. And it separates the bottom 25% from the top 75%. Q2, which is the second quartile, and same as the median, P50, separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. The third quartile, which we is exactly the same number as P75, separates the bottom 75% with the top 25%. So here are some statistics. Remember, statistics are characteristics of a sample. Here's the, some statistics. That, define, that are defined using quartiles and percentiles. So the interquartile range, or IQR, is going to be Q3 minus Q1. It's the distance between the first and third quartile. The semi-interquartile range is this value divided by 2. And the 10 to 90 percentile range is P90 minus P100. The five number summary is for a set of data is uh, consists of these five values. The first one is the minimum, then the second one is the first quartile, then the second quartile or the median, then the third quartile or the maximum and the maximum. Here's an example. Compute the five number summary of the happiness scores of Western Europe. This is associated with a, uh, a very interesting study in which the happiness of different countries was uh, tried to be quantified. So these are all in order from um, least happy to most happy. And uh, let's, so let's find the five number summary here. So one, the first one is the minimum. That's going to be 5.033. Now I need to find two is Q1. And Q1 is the same thing as P25. So to find P25, I'm going to have I equals 25 over 100 times N plus 1. So N is going to be 20 plus 1, so that's 21. And so for I, I get 5.25, which is not an integer. And so I'm going to average the fifth and sixth values. For that, I will use my calculator. 6.4195. So with percentiles, you always just round it one more than the original data. So the original data was rounded to three decimal places, so I'm going to round one more than that. Okay, for, okay now I need to find the median, which is Q2, which is P50. I am going to take k equals 50 over 100 
times n plus 1 again, which is 21. That gives me 10.5. And so I need to average the 10th and the 11th values. That is going to equal 6.907 plus 6.929 over 2. And that gives me 6.918. So for Q3, I'm looking for P75. I use I equals 75 over 100 times 21. And I get 15.75. And so I add, need to average the values of the Netherlands and Finland. And I end up getting 7.376. And then for the fifth and final number in my summary, that is going to be the maximum. So that's going to be 7.526. There is my five number summary. Next thing we're going to talk about is box plots or box and whisker diagrams. Um, a box plot is a representation of a data set that consists of first a scaled underlying number line covering the range of the data. A line extending from the minimum from the minimum value to the maximum value and then a box with lines drawn at the first and third first second and third quartile. I'm going to uh, demonstrate that in an example. But first, let's talk about outliers. An outlier is any data value whose distance is either below Q1 or above Q3 by more than 1.5 times the IQR. Sometimes outliers are indicated on a box plot, and I'll show you how that is. Okay. So the example here is going to be, we're going to make a box plot of the Western European happiness scores. So let's go ahead and grab those scores. All right, so there they are. So the first thing I need to draw is my underlying scaled uh, number line. I'll put five right here, and then I'll put, oh, let's maybe put eight right here. There's my number line. So put a six right here, seven right there. There's my scaled number line. Now above that, I'm going to start putting in those, those points. So now I need a line that goes from the minimum, which is 5.03, and it goes all the way to 7.526. So that's pretty close to about right there. And we've got a line that connects them. Now what I need to do is draw a box that has sides at Q1, Q2, and Q3. So Q1 is 6.4, which would be a little less than 6.5. And then 6.9 is Q2, the median. So that'll be about right there, somewhat close to uh, about right there, somewhat close to 7. And then Q3 is 7.3. So maybe something like that. And that is my box and whiskers plot. Let me just put in a few more things here. Yeah, so there's my, blo my box plot. So, so notice that this right here is my median, meaning this, is, this, this covers half the data. So this data, this half of the data, is more spread out than other half. And this quartile right here is very spread out. So that's interesting. It's very spread out. Now this box plot here is going to have a pretty wide um, interquartile range. And so you would not, I would not expect any outliers. Okay, so let's summarize what we did. So we discussed the percentiles, which included two major topics. The percentiles of a data set, which was a data value or the percentile rank of a data value given a data set, which was a percentage. Then we talked about quartiles and the five number summary. And then we talked about constructing box plots. Okay, so that's that. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you in class.